Hello and welcome back to LTP, that is, Learn to Paint with Mike. I am Mike, I am your host. Today we are going to be working on this cool looking dude. Here, let me get a better focus on there. There we go. Okay, this is Chromac 2. He is a warcaster for the Circle Faction in that's a circle of Ouroboros or Ouroboros or however you want to say that word you know, the snake that eats itself uh, for the game Hordes and as you can see I've assembled and primed him white as is my normal so uh, first thing I'm gonna do as per usual is some sketching. I'm using this bittersweet chocolate today. Um, partly because I can't find my burnt umber and partly because this is almost the same stuff. Hold on. There's my burnt umber. I found it. But I think actually bittersweet chocolate has a darker tone to it so maybe I'll, I'll like it. So we're going to start with the sketch, um, essentially doing a uh, light wash and uh, using this very thinly through a uh, you know, heavy water light pigment so it's very thin and just goes into all the deep crevices. So first I'm going to mix up a thin mix, maybe a little more water, alright, let's see how that flows, okay, I think I like that, alright, so now I'm just going to paint this all over this model. You know, again, the reason why I always start with a white primer and then a dark wash, whether that's a brown like this or a black, is so that I can see all the details. So right now his, his face is kind of just, oh, that's a white blah. And now all of a sudden all of his little details pop out. It's not a white blah. That's a very angry... Well, he's called a Tharn, but I was about to call him an elk. But you know... You can see his eyes and his... Horns have these cool spirals on them. All of that detail just suddenly pops out. And I use a dark color on the wash because the recesses are typically darkest anyway. And I'm using a brown color because um, the overall tone of this model's uh, paint scheme Let's look at the back here. Just a white blah. And now all of a sudden, ooh, look at that beautiful detail. Anyway, to continue what I was saying before, this model is going to have an overall warm tone. There will be cooler color elements to it, um, but the overall tone is going to be warm. So I'm using a brown, and kind of a warmish brown, in the deepest, darkest corners. Look at that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful spirals. 
carvings and these thorny bits. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I really like this model, I think. I'm going to take this blah, and it suddenly... Ooh. And all that detail popping out. Now if I were doing a cooler color scheme, so if you look at the color wheel, when I say warm I mean yellow, red, orange type pigments. And when I say cool I mean the opposite, that is green, and blue, and purple. So, if I were to use, if this were going to be a cooler colored model scheme, I would use a black. I prefer like a licorice kind of black, which has kind of purpley, bluish notes to it as my as my undercolor, as my sketch color. And as you can see, I'm just going over this whole thing. And I'm gonna be coloring this back fur like a big old bear fur. So I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm thinking grizzly bear. And actually, so I'm actually doing this for uh, one of my gaming partners. Chris, here's a shout out to you if you're watching. Um, he's actually paying me to do him up. So I'll call this a commission. Um, not the first commission I've ever done but the second. <laughs> so I'm fairly new to the whole commissioning thing and still don't have my pricing structure solid because, you know, whatever. Anyway, that's not the point of this conversation. I mean, this is a painting, learn to paint episode, not a learn to uh, charge money for painting channel. And it's not like... I could give good advice on that anyway. The whole point of, of my comment just now is that I'm kind of new. Anyway, um, and so he's he's kind of dictated the the color scheme, and it's primarily going to be like the studio colors. Um, he did want something a little bit different in that, that he wanted all the hair like the beard hair and the you know his his personal body hair wanted it to be like a bright or a true red as opposed to a orangish blondish reddish color um, That guy looks pretty mean. Would not want to come across him walking through the forest. No, I think I'll pass on that experience. And but other than that, he was he was looking for generally studio paint colors, um, which means a lot of a lot of browns, a lot of green. A lot of uh, natural foresty. Wow, look at those bones. He's got a bunch of bones on his girdle. Oh, that's not a girdle. Loincloth. I didn't even notice that while I was assembling him. Ah, lots of beautiful little details. A little skull right here. Let's see if we can get that to focus. 
Yeah, look at those. It's like he's wearing a whole human down there. Maybe he is. Um, so I've been thinking of this paint scheme for a little while. Um, oh, little skulls on the shoulders. I'm typically not one for skulls. You know, they don't really... Just kind of meh. Uh, you know, with Games Workshop type games. There's just like skulls on everything. And I'm like... You know, there's... There's more interesting stuff than skulls. But on a rampaging berserker dude... Who's twice the size of a normal man... I think he can be excused for wearing some trophy skulls. I think it adds. Rather than being one note skulls, because skulls for skulls sake, I think probably this guy has a story behind each of those skulls. There's a reason he wears them on his shoulder. wasn't wandering through the forest one day. Hmm, I think I'll put a skull on my shoulder. Oh, and seeing those skulls and all that distracted me. What was I talking about? Paint scheme, I think? It's interesting. I watch YouTube videos. And the host will say something like that, like, Oh, now where was I? What was I talking about? And I'm... I'm almost yelling through the... through the screen, You were just talking about your mother! Or, you know, whatever he was really talking about. How can they not remember what they were just barely talking about? Well, I've been humbled. Turns out that painting and recording at the same time takes some uh, headspace, takes some processing power and so we're using some virtual memory my uh, RAM is maxed out so I had to use some hard drive as virtual memory and that part of hard drive is not so it's not able to be used for storage. So it turns out I can't remember what I said thirty seconds after I said it. And there's another tangent for you. So we were talking about the color scheme. Oh, yeah, see that's so so wet it just kind of dribbles down and off my off the base and into my fingers it's all right with me yeah look at that some nice detail on there Okay, so now I, I finally just remembered what I was about to talk about. Um, so Chris gave me this model, I guess it was three weeks ago? Not quite a full month, I think. And um, I was in the middle of my other, my first commission project, so I wasn't able to get to it right away. And Chris was alright with that, he understands. Um, and he gave me this model, and we negotiated a price and all that, and talked about the color scheme. And I've had a little bit of extra time to think about how to execute this color scheme, because when I put Mr. Chromac here together, oh, look at all that lovely detail. I like this model. 
you know, I don't play Circle of Ouroboros. Um, partly because I'm not a fan of werewolves. I just don't like that trope. And that kind of seems like their deal. But this guy. Ugh, lovely. Anyway, um, I had some extra time to think about the paint scheme. Because when I assembled the model, Chromax tusks, these two tusks here, they didn't come with the model. They weren't in the package. Now, fortunately, Privateer Press has an amazing parts service. And all I did was take a picture of the model with the missing pieces and submit it on their website. And that was on a Friday. The next Monday they processed it. And then I had the parts in my hands two days ago. And that was only like a wait time of, I think total start to finish was a week. So like I ordered it the Friday before, they processed it on Monday, and I got it just this Friday. And then here I am. Are you starting to paint on it? Okay, well I think that's it for our primary sketch. I'm just going to spin them around, make sure I didn't miss any spots. Some nice musculature on, in there. And this this is going to be a, a leather pad, like a... I don't want to say suede, but like a leather. And then the back side, the fur. And the thorns. The metal bits are mostly going to be a gold or a brass color. I might do some of my copper on the weapon, just because I... For whatever reason, I like the look of the copper accent on the weapon. Um, unless Chris contacts me after seeing this video and says, No copper! Um, so we're going to do a bright red hair. And then actually I was thinking um, of the colors and the big old bear pelt. And I was like, I think I've seen a movie with a big old dude who's twice as big as everybody else with lots of green and um, wears a big old bear pelt on his back. And I don't know if you've seen the movie Brave by Disney, but King Fergus has a big old bear pelt and he wears lots of green. So, so these, the upraised parts are going to be a, a gold metal color. Um, the, the metallic accents down here are going to be gold. But then, and then, then underneath is going to be a green. Um, and he doesn't actually have a lot of armor on. He's mostly just like big, beefy, meaty guy. We'll do this as bone. Red on his body hair. Um, copper accents. And then this blade. Hmm. Not so sure about the middle on the blade. And maybe I'll pick out these runes. Uh, give him a glow effect or something. Um, and this back part will all be metallic um, with with green. Um, anyway, so that's that's the plan. Thanks for joining me on this video, and I'll uh, see you next time. End transmission.